Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB-TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Tim Keen, the president and CEO of Second Harvest Food Bank of East Central Indiana. Tim has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Tim, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So food is so fundamental. Talk about the work that you do and the scope of your operations. Well, oddly enough, the food is a piece of the work that we do, but there are several more layers. And so we, uh, we tend to sum up our organization in six words, help for today and hope for tomorrow. Help for today, hope and, for tomorrow. And the help for today side of things is the food distribution aspect of the work that we do. We partner with about 115 agencies in eight counties. Many of these agencies are uh, church food pantries, soup kitchens, community centers. And we get food out to uh, these agencies and they in turn direct, uh, provide it to direct uh, clients that come in to see them. Such a, such a simple, I'm gonna stop you there, because such a simple description. We get food out. That is so simple. And it's so complicated to do. You have to, you have to have a source uh, for the food, right? And then you have this this huge logistics operation because food is perishable. Mm -hmm. So you have to get that out on a daily basis, and and time is of essence. Well, you, you summed it up correctly. Uh, we're very much a perishable food warehouse. Over 60% of the food that we distribute is either refrigerated or frozen. And so your warehouse, you're also a transshipment operation, meaning that you're unloading and then reloading. Exactly. Right. And, and the amount of time that that food can stand in the warehouse, in, any kind, in transit and so on, that is all additive to its perishability. So you have to think about the utilization of time and the efficiency of that operation of moving goods from its source all the way through to the end user. When you have a semi-load of bananas show up, you better have a plan. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes moving parts. We're a member of a national organization called Feeding America. Feeding America is made up of over 200 regional food banks across the country that do the same work we do. They're just responsible for different counties. And every county and every state has a Feeding America food bank that's responsible for food assistance. And so because of this relationship with Feeding America, we are able to access lots of food from across the country, not just in our particular eight county region. So it's a big benefit. And then you were also going on to talk about the other services, the Hope for Tomorrow. Talk about those services as well. And then let's, yeah. let's deepen the entire workflow that you yeah. manage. The short term strategy is the help for today, getting the food out the door. The medium and the longer term strategies we have actually address the hope for tomorrow. The medium term strategy we have engages uh, families in relationship building. And in doing that, we bring in community partners, whether they be from middle income or from wealth, and they become intentional uh, friends with people that are involved in a program we have called Forward Steps. And Forward Steps, in the nature of this relationship building, has a weekly meal, a gathering in the center of town, and 60, 80, sometimes more people show up uh, from all these different walks of life. And they intentionally work together uh, over some smart goal setting. They divide up into smaller groups and, and uh, there's some instruction period that goes along with that. And so that engagement can run anywhere from 18 to 36 months. And it, it, it really empowers someone who is struggling and could be a struggle in many different areas of their life, but uh, through some self-identification of where they are in some of these resources or absence of resources. It helps them to formulate smart goals, to uh, work with people sitting across the table on a uh, regular basis, and there's mutual accountability. Everybody at the table sets goals. So there's mutual accountability, and there's also a reciprocity component that's introduced to that as well. And you create a a multifaceted approach where you're dealing with immediate need, with very, which very often has an emergency character. Right. 
um, but you're also providing a hand up um, in a way that is uh, that that is very respectful. And and let's face it, the need is very high. Uh, you currently have uh, delivered well in the last year over seven million pounds of food. Right. Um, you have three thousand volunteers. You have a considerable uh, logistics operation that, that 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 is going forward. So the idea of ensuring that a codependent um, culture doesn't take hold mm -hmm. and instead an empowered and empowering culture is part and parcel of your solution and how you approach your clients is so important. I think that's very important. Uh, the idea of uh, reciprocity is I think a key component because when you empower people to give back, many times people that are struggling have never had uh, the opportunity presented to them in that way. To help someone else, to, to as a volunteer right. as well. Right, So it, it, it comes back to this old uh, idea that a professor shared with me a few years ago that everybody in the world has something they can offer. Everybody has something in their hand that they can offer. And it may not be monetary, it may be a variety of things, but it provides them with a way that they can participate. Another key component to this is working with uh, the children that are involved with these families. We have a youth engagement program and we meet with the children at the same time their parents are meeting with the community members. And in the, uh, the engagement process with the children, we're talking about things like uh, financial literacy, uh, mindfulness, uh, respect, uh, all the things that many times uh, are going to come into play in their life at some point and we're trying to help them see those uh, areas uh, having great value. In terms of, of how you develop the resources for the organization, uh, you serve eight counties. Um, uh, there are uh, six, almost 68,000 people right. um, who are part of your service area. Um, talk about how you fund yourself and how you uh, ensure that the organization remains operationally strong because just having a good mission and doing good work is not enough. You have to be able to do it this year and next year and the year after. Yeah. How do you ensure that, that, that you maintain balance given the, given the scope of the need here? Well, one of the ways that I think uh, we're able to remain in a... Uh, in a uh, good position is that we have a very diversified uh, set of funding sources. We're not heavily dependent on any one area uh, for funding. Uh, for example, uh, we are a member of several different counties, United Ways. Uh, we're in uh, good standing and, and have received uh, uh, gifts from most, if not all, of the community foundations. Uh, we have a uh, pretty aggressive direct mail program where we're reaching out to people in direct mail, telling our story, and they in turn send us uh, some support. Uh, we do a fair amount of grant writing to various organizations. Uh, we do fundraisers and special events. and So because we are so diversified, um, it re really requires a lot of attention uh, pretty much we're always looking for money in some way or another. And the interesting attribute of nonprofits is so often the purchaser of the service is not the receiver of the service. And that's actually happening right here, right now. Right? Very often the people who are funding, they don't receive the service. So, mm -hmm. so that's a really interesting and very unique attribute of how nonprofits operate. It causes some uh, requirement for communication back to your donors and, and ensuring that they remain on board and they understand the value that you're delivering out to society and that it conforms to the intent of the donors as well, doesn't it? No question. Uh, people really enjoy sharing the stories. Having them many times uh, to engage in uh, observation or actually hands-on in some of the work that we do provides real meaning. And you have businesses that will have employees come in and, and do volunteer work as you well bet. as part of, of team building and as part of their commitment to their communities. 
Our long-term strategy has to do with working with uh, schools. And you think, well, what are you doing with schools? Well, we're really involved in a relationship building program between the parents and the school staff. And we really believe from listening to school superintendents that there is an absence of relationship that occurs many times in schools that have high free and reduced lunch rates. And so we are participating with the schools and the parents to help bring them in the door for this relationship building to occur over time, which adds value to the child's education when they begin to hear positive messaging about going to school from their parents as well as school staff. So feedback from that program we're getting very quickly, very early, is that attendance has improved, incidences of negative behavior have gone down, uh, parents' engagement has went up to the point of forming some PTOs where there weren't any before. Uh, volunteering for chaperone events and those kinds of things are up. So we're on the right path. And to your point about the donor uh, understanding the impact of what they do, that's really provided us with an opportunity to bring funders to a school, to observe, to talk to the teachers, to actually distribute uh, some food to some families, uh, talk to some families. And so when you can provide that immediate feedback to a donor, very impactful. So it seems that the, that the food operation, the food distribution operation is very well established and that's just a matter of, of scaling um, as, as needs adjust in the community. Um, it seems that a lot of your efforts for the future in terms of shaping the organization and its mission and the services and and the various programs that you offer uh, are really about that hope for the future. Absolutely. It's relationship based and we believe that that is what it takes to make the significant changes in someone's life uh, to long term shorten the line of need. It's such a wonderful, wonderful approach, very deep thinking in terms of, of the work that you do. Tim Keene, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Second Harvest uh, Food Bank of East Central Indiana. Thank you. thank you so much for the work that you do for the citizens in these, these eight counties. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you.